All right, <clears throat> Dr. Wayne here again. I wanted to explain some stuff. The U.S. healthcare system has failed to keep young and old safe, has received the uh, highest death rate in the world for young and old people. Um, so from our youngest to our oldest people, we're highest death rate in the world. Um, the most expensive yet incompetent healthcare system in the entire world and the leading killer in the United States is our healthcare system, this so-called system that we all live by that... Um, basically says you're fine until you feel good, right? I mean, until you feel bad. Half the United States will be obese in 15 years, according to the World Health Organization and Harvard. We are in an obesity and chronic disease crisis, according to the World Health Organization. One third of people are obese in the United States, equals 8 million people have diabetes, and 7 million people have chronic coronary heart disease. Across the board, the rise in obesity appears to be driven by changes in our global food system, increased availability of processed, affordable foods, along with a more sedentary lifestyle, according to the World Health Organization. That was August 25th, 2011. So we have a situation, and I'm just going to talk to you today about fat, um, and we're going to discuss fat and what it is about, but I need to bring this to your attention. That This isn't something just for you just to take lightly. Um, again, what we've been doing isn't working. 30% of boys and 40% of girls are at risk for developing type 2 diabetes. 30% of the U.S. population is now considered obese. Right, again, one-third, and 60% are overweight. So if you think about it, your friends and family, a third of those people, if maybe not yourself also, are considered obese, and six out of ten of those people you know um, are considered to be overweight. 20% of American four-year-olds are obese now. Um, childhood obesity has more than tripled in the last 20 years, and adolescent obesity has also tripled. Um, if you're overweight as an adolescent, you have a 70% chance of being overweight as an adult. We have a problem, huge problem, and it has to do with um, our weight and what that causes um, uh, as far as diabetes and heart disease and us living early life, dying early. Um, so heart disease deaths in the United States every 34 seconds, according to WebMD, every 34 seconds someone dies of heart disease. Cancer deaths in the United States, 1,500 people die each day. 3,400 more are diagnosed each day, according to the National Institutes of Health. The United States is number one in the world in obesity. Number one, the fattest country in the entire world. If you even are 15 pounds overweight, you're double your risk of getting type 2 diabetes. 15 pounds. 22 pounds, if you were to ask yourself, it increases your heart attack risk by 75%. Obesity doubles your risk of heart failure and triples your risk of breast cancer in women. You know, we've been told this whole thing that the older you get, the fatter you get. We see in other countries, in Okinawa and Royal China and all these places that, Royal Japan, that as we get, as they get older, they actually get leaner. And in the United States, as we get older, we get fatter. I think it's just because we become lazier. Um, people say this all the time that cancer and heart disease um, are genetic if you get them too bad for you. Uh, you know, you might be predisposed genetically to be getting heart disease and cancer, but at the end of the day, we know that 95, 98% of them are um, lifestyle caused. Um, and maybe not caused, but our lifestyle definitely would contribute to or um, provoke more of that stuff to happen to us. I mean, we know cancer grows via sugar. Um, so it's just a big deal that you work on your lifestyle. I guarantee you that if you were able to change the way you eat and change the way you move and change the way you sleep and, and all that stuff, address that stuff at least, you're going to be better off. And if it is that you're going to get cancer, you're going to be better off to fight it. Um, but today we're talking about fat. So fat makes you fat. That's our idea, right? That's what we've been told since the 60s, I think. Well, here's the, the rule. is You need to eliminate damaged fats and replace them with healthy fats. That's just a simple, simply the way it goes. Um, and we have in our cells called a lipid bilayer, which means that fat goes through the cell via fat. It allows it to come through. Um, healthy fat allows your body um, to build cell membranes, absorb vitamins, um, helps with vital organ function, protects you from extreme temperatures, of course, um, regulates and makes you makes up building blocks for hormones. So you need fat to make make hormones. It, fat lowers inflammation. Um, allows for proper cellular detoxification through the cell membrane. When you're eating bad fats, that lipid bilayer gets congested. So 
even though the fat will get through there, it gets into the cell, it can't get out. So it becomes, it's called what cellular congestion is. And cellular congestion leads to inflammation, heart disease, cancer, all these other things. Um, your fat makes up 70% of your brain tissue. And um, extremely important, you, from fat you get arachidonic acid, which is extremely important for brain function, and conjugenic linoleic acid, which is extremely important for fat burning. So we just have to really get you to focus on eating fat again or doing it on a regular basis and getting rid of this low-fat, stupid diet that people keep eating. The non-fat movement escalated in the 60s and 70s. We had this guy named Ansel Keys, who was a heart uh, surgeon. Um, butter and meat consumption dropped by approximately 50% during that time. Margarine consumption went by four times it rose, and heart disease went through the roof. In 1910, myocardial infarction or heart disease was almost non-existent. In 1930, there were 3,000 deaths per year. There's 500,000 deaths a year in 1960s, and today it's over 50% of people that die die of heart disease. That's the reality. So what changed? Well, it was this lipid hypothesis, this low-fat movement. Um, we have more low-fat foods we have, and low-fat diets than anywhere in the world, and yet we have the highest rate of obesity. Answer that for me. If fat caused you to get fat, how come we have low fat, more low-fat foods, more low-fat diets anywhere, and we're still obese? Okay, dietary fat down from 40 to 44% since the 70s. Obesity is up from 14% to 22 And now we're seeing actually it's 33% at obesity and overweight is 60 Right, this Ansel Keys was, um, he made a flawed study which incriminated saturated fats and the increase of stroke and heart diseases. Many doctors today still hold the incorrect view that saturated fats are bad for you. This is not true. Time came out and explained this whole thing. Um, you just gotta, you just gotta understand that fat is very, very important. And if you're eating trans fats or bad fats, they're gonna cause cellular congestion, which leads to all kinds of problems. Lipid hypothesis is elevated fat and cholesterol in the blood causes heart disease. The fact is there's never been a randomized research study that's ever been able to link a low-fat diet and lower cholesterol to a lower risk of coronary heart disease. Listen to this. More people have heart attacks with normal cholesterol than they do with elevated cholesterol. There's a higher death rate among people with low cholesterol than with higher, higher cholesterol, according to the British Medical Journal. You know, I probably couldn't say that enough to get you to understand it, right? Not understand, but believe more people have heart attacks with normal cholesterol than they do with elevated cholesterol. France, for instance, has higher saturated fat intakes, lower death rate from cardiovascular disease, approximately 30% less than us. Spain, since 1976, there's been a decrease in cardiovascular disease and stroke death rates, while intake um, of meat, dairy, and fish has gone up. East Africa, Maasai men consume about a pound of saturated fat on a daily basis, yet examinations show very low levels of blood cholesterol and virtually no arterial plaque. Um, Alaska Eskimos have a diet of 80% fat and they're the happiest people on the planet they've been deemed. Right? Butter is bad, lard is bad, that's not true. In 2006, food manufacturers were forced to list the amount of trans fats on their um, products. Right? I mean, that's great that you're Food manufacturers were forced to do it, but what happened was they manipulated the law to allow labels to read trans fat free if the product contained less than 500 milligrams of trans fats per serving. So they just put in 0.49 grams of trans fats per serving and called the trans fat free, and it's not the way that it goes. They're lying to you, they're manipulating you, it's a scam. A lot of companies just decrease serving size, like McDonald's. What you got to do, and what I always teach you to do, is read labels. So, if you talk about just trans fats themselves, you always want to go to the ingredients. So, if you think Skippy peanut butter, for instance, look at the ingredients. Freshly roasted peanuts. As soon as you roast a peanut, it ruins the fat, causes it to become rancid, and it becomes a trans fat. Soybean oil, the trans fat. Hydrogenated, anytime you see the word hydrogenated, or vegetable oil, it's a trans fat. You do not want to eat it. Again, leads to cellular congestion because it can go in the cell, but it can't get out. It causes inflammation, cancer, heart disease, placking, blah, 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 obesity. We know all that. Trans fats are preservatives. They keep things sort of 
safe. This is why you can eat a Twinkie two years after you buy it, right? Anything in a box pretty much has trans fats. You just got to look at the ingredient label, and I'm going to go through the trans fats. Here they are. They Anything that says vegetable oil, soybean oil, corn oil, safflower, cottonseed, or canola oil, all trans fats. You'll find them in margarine, any kind of bread, crackers, cookies, salad dressings. Just look in the ingredient label. If you see any of those words, you know they're trans fats. Um, we just have to get you eating um, the correct word, the correct uh, fats, so your body can do what it's supposed to do. You might have a good oil, like olive oil, but if it's with canola oil, you don't want to eat that product. Like mayonnaise has canola and olive oils. Well, canola oil is a trans fat. You don't want to eat it. it causes arterial inflammation. causes all kinds of issues. And you just got to stop. So let me talk to you about the good fats. Um, I'm going to list them for you. So here are the healthy fats. Olive oil. You want olive oil as much as possible, but you don't want to heat it over 118 degrees uh, because it becomes rancid and ruins and becomes a trans fat. Butter, as soon as it browns, it ruins also. So if you're gonna cook like eggs with butter, you gotta cook them really low temperatures and it's gonna take you a long time to cook them. Um, fish oils are extremely good for you. Hemp seeds and hemp seed oil, flax and flax oils, avocado, you could be eating three to five avocados a day and have no problem, have great amount of energy, and also be burning fat. Fat helps you burn fat. Nuts and seeds need to be raw. Coconuts, coconut oil, coconut milk, coconut flour need to become a staple in your diet. Now, uh, coconut I could talk about forever. Um, you can eat a tablespoon of coconut every morning, extremely good for not only weight loss, but just to help you kind of get energy and get going in the morning. There's this stuff called Bulletproof Coffee, where you take a teaspoon of raw butter and a teaspoon of coconut oil in your black coffee, stir it up, and then drink it. it gives you all kinds of energy to do that. Coconut oil is the one you want to cook with most of the time. You can really heat it up to high levels. So as much coconut oil to cook, cook with as you can, that's best because it's good fat. You're getting that good fat, and then you're not going to ruin it for the temperature. Real butter is the best, raw is the best, obviously. Raw cheese and raw yogurt, goat or raw yogurt is the best. Um, Realmilk.com, you can go um, to find that stuff. And then grass-fed meats, we'll talk about that in, in the future. But So fat, you just really want to increase your consumption of fat. The rule is to replace all sugar consumption with fat, and it'll really help your energy go up, your body to function better, um, you start to lose weight, not only that, but protect your organs, get your body to flush out toxins and all that other stuff from the congestion of the trans fats. Try to avoid them. Um, you just have to. It's just the way it goes. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks. Bye.